The final project for this class is a web application. So one of the things we need to do is get started with a web application framework that we'll use for that project. So there's a lot of web application frameworks for Java going back to the 90s. So there's a lot to choose from, but this is not a web application course. So what our goal is for this class is to just do the simplest thing possible and choose a framework that has minimal dependencies and is really easy to get started. So after looking at a bunch of different things, we chose a framework called Spark. It's a micro web framework. And the nice thing about it is it's just dead simple. You don't need a web server or an application server. It embeds Jetty inside of it. So all you have to do is define a main method for a class and invoke Spark and it will automatically start Jetty in the background. And then you have your web application. So like with the Manga Java driver, we have to import it into our project. So let's figure out what the Maven coordinates for Spark are. So the first thing with Spark is that it's not actually in Maven Central, so we need to tell Maven what repository to download it from. So I'm going to add a repository section in my pom.xml and add the Spark repository to it. And then I'm going to actually add the dependency, which is here. So the group ID is Spark, the artifact is Spark, and the release is 0.9.9.4-snapshot. And we should see that IntelliJ added the dependency on Spark, as well as some things that Spark depends on, which mostly Jetty and the servlet API. So now we're ready to write our first Spark application. So I'm going to create a class called Hello World Spark Style. And I'm going to say spark.get new route. So what we're doing here is we're calling a static method on the Spark class. And we're giving it a route. And a route is basically just one thing. It's a pattern that this route should match. So we're saying that this route will match the slash pattern. So it's the home page for this particular web application. And you return object. So I'm just going to return hello world from Spark. So when you start this web app and you go to the slash URI, it will call this handle method. And whatever is returned from this handle method will be turned into the response to the get request. So let's run it. The default port for Spark is 4567. You, you can change that, but we'll just use the default for now. And I'll go to localhost 4567 slash. And it says hello world from Spark. If we go somewhere else, like slash not found, it'll 404. But slash goes to our handler. So that's pretty much it for Spark. You see how easy it is. Just to review, we've defined a main method. We're calling a static method get on the Spark class. And we're defining one route for the path slash and returning hello world from Spark. When we start the application, it starts listening on 4567 and returns the web page hello world from Spark.